Welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we have the unenviable task of talking about the fill adjustment and just filling stuff in general in Photoshop. But we're going to keep it short and sweet. And you know what they say, sometimes the best gifts come in small packages. So hang with me here. Let's talk about our sponsor real quick, graphicstock.com. Graphicstock.com, well, the month of April is Creative Rewards Month for graphicstock.com. You can sign up and get access to their over, well over 300,000 graphics, photos, vectors, and more, all royalty-free for just $39. That's $39 for an entire six-month subscription. The entire six months is just 39 bucks. So if you need a picture of a young and pretty woman with a coffee cup laughing, somewhat fake laugh, admittedly, but if you need that photo, they've got it. Check out the link down in the description. So let's talk about filling stuff. First and foremost, if you create a selection, I'm going to do this up here on a new layer so we can get rid of it easily. If I create a new selection with the marquee tools of any sort, marquee, uh, rectangular or elliptical marquee, um, I can hit Alt or Option. So it will be Alt Backspace on PC, Option Delete on uh, the Mac, and it's going to fill it with the foreground color. I'm going to undo that, Command or Control Z. If I use Command Delete, that would be Control Delete on the PC, it's going to fill your selection with the background color. So just a little... Uh, a little hotkey trick to get us going here. Um, next up, what we can do is we can create a path. So I'm going to take the ellipse tool. I'm just going to choose create a path here. And I'm going to create a circle. Uh, just like that is fine. I'll move the circle over right here. Now, if we want to fill this circle, yeah, sure, we can go through and fill it this way. But one of the things we can do is we can go to the paths panel. By the way, you can go window paths. And you can right click on the path and just choose fill path. And you can see we're going to get a little dialog box that says, hey, what do you want to fill it with? Foreground color, background color, maybe a custom color. Uh, and it's going to, you know, give you the pop-up window here. Well, let's go with red. We can choose a blend mode. We can choose an opacity. We can choose to preserve transparency if applicable. Uh, we don't need to do that right here. And we can also uh, render this with some kind of feathered radius if we like, which just means the edges are going to be blurred a bit. Um, 50 pixels is relatively blurry. I'm actually going to crank it up a bit because this is a pretty big image. And I'm going to hit OK. And you can see we have a very soft red uh, little poof that appears here in the middle of our image. Now, this is not live, so it is, these are just pixels. If we adjust the path, our soft shape is not going to expand with the path. So we can deselect the path and we just have our little poofta of red here and we can move it wherever we like. So that's pretty easy filling paths, filling selections. Um, we can also, uh, let's create another new layer here. Let's say we just want to fill this entire layer. Of course, we could just use the hotkey, right? That's option delete, alt backspace on the PC. But we can also go edit fill. Now the fill, uh, the fill menu or the fill dialog box, I guess I should say, is interesting. Uh, the hotkey for it, by the way, is Shift F5. So that's a, a nice little hotkey to know. You can again choose foreground, background, color. You can also choose to fill it with a pattern or history. And history, by the way, the way that that works is if you open up your history panel right here, when you uh, are observing any of your history states, you get this little brush icon. Whatever brush I, or whatever history state you place that next to, that's what you're going to um, fill from. Let me give you an example here. Let's just invert the color of our donut layer, right? So we've got this invert option. Then we're going to invert it back. So we're going to sample from our first invert. So we should be getting some blue donuts here. So check this out. If I use my uh, marquee tool here, let's just create the selection. We'll go edit, fill. We're going to choose to fill from history. So we're, we're, we're sort of sampling from that history state. Hit OK. And you can see we filled with that bizarre inverted version of our donut uh, photo. I'm going to deselect my marquee just like that. I'm going to choose my uh, blank layer here. Again, we're going to go up to fill. Uh, a couple other things we have. We have the, uh, the option for content aware fill, which we're not going to get into that in this tutorial. We can also just go black or white or, which is very useful for dodging and burning, a straight 50% gray, uh, which it can just be so, so useful. That's the main thing I use this fill dialog box for. Hit OK. You can see we get a plain 50% gray. And of course, if you set a 50% gray layer to soft light, it entirely disappears. Unless, of course, you have some areas of it that are a little bit brighter. Right, like so, I can paint and sort of make little changes of uh, where I want to maybe increase shadows, and I'm doing a very rough job of it here, just to kind of show you some of the value of having a 50% gray layer. I'm going to delete that layer. So. Filling in Photoshop, very important, very, very useful for a, a, a wide, wide variety of things. And there's a ton of options to do it. And before I uh, let you go here, one of the other things you can do is actually choose a fill layer. So you can go new fill layer, solid color, and you know give the layer whatever name you want. Hit OK. And then choose a color to fill that layer with. Let's say maybe a red. And then we'll set this to a blend mode of like soft light. So we're kind of making everything red. That's too red though. So we'll reduce the opacity to maybe like 35. And then we realize you know what? 
that's actually not the color we want at all. We want a green. There's a few ways we can change this. Of course, you can double click the layer thumbnail and choose a green, right? And then it changes it. But there's another way we can do this. Let's say we've sampled a color, right? So let's, uh, let's grab our eyedropper tool. Let's sample this sort of yellowish color here. Now that's our foreground color. We can use that same hotkey we learned right there at the beginning, Alt, uh, Alt, Backspace, or Option, Delete. And if we have that layer selected, it's going to fill that fill color layer with our fill uh, our, our foreground color. Excuse me. So if I hit the letter X and swap my foreground and background colors, and now go Option, Delete, that'd be Alt, Backspace. It's now going to fill it with white. So that's a really cool little function and feature of the fill layer. And of course, the fill layer is great because it's non-destructive. You can change blend mode and opacity, and you can always go and change the fill color later on. So for filling, filling tips, fill layers, and non-filled donuts in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.